It's a tale as old as time. Gag character comes out and sweeps the fandom by storm. It shouldn't be shocking, but in some cases, it sort of is. Such as in the case of Five Nights at Freddy's Mediocre Melodies, a band of animatronics built specifically to be long-forgotten Freddy characters and perhaps even notable rip-offs. Such as Ned Bear, who is totally distinct from Freddy and his predecessor Fredbear. This is especially bizarre considering the fact that Freddy Fazbear himself, and Five Nights at Freddy's as a whole, originated as a horror-based parody of Chuck E. Cheese and the Rock of Fire Explosion. So to have their tongue-in-cheek knockoff band of in-game background characters become a big deal and as so few as two games appearances and some odd cameos is at least somewhat surprising. It's sort of like a double parody in a way. So what's the deal with the mediocre melodies? Well, today I'm going to go over them each, and by the end, we'll hopefully find a conclusive reason to why Mr. Hippo got a Glamrock variant before Foxy did. So, where do we start? Before we get into the mediocre melodies, let's really go over what they are in the meta sense. The mediocre melodies are a play on those obscure animatronic characters who appeared briefly in a few restaurants before being discontinued. At least that's the vibe I got. You may not believe this, but Chuck E. Cheese had a huge Rolodex of one-and-done animatronic characters who were briefly brought into rotation, only to be removed and forgotten in favor of the main band. Such as Foxy Colleen, a character I only know about because I was probably doing some sort of FNAF research and stumbled across her. I went through a period where, because of FNAF, I got interested in looking into the backstory of these old bands and, well, Foxy Colleen. But yes, as styles of animatronics and layouts changed, and with the opening and closing of various businesses, many characters were lost along the way. And while it's never clarified in FNAF that the mediocre melodies are parallels to this, I think they very well could have been, intentionally or not. So who are the mediocre melodies? Well, the band consists of Happy Frog, Pig Patch, Ned Bear, Orville Elephant, and Mr. Hippo. Happy Frog is a frog with a basic green and yellow color scheme and big pink eyes, and a large mouth with cutesy buck teeth. She's the sole girl of the group and is this bubbly and excitable type. She also seems to be a bit quirky. I bet you weren't expecting me, were ya? Turn your back for one second and I'm like, with you, ninja skills. Everyone underestimates me, but then they turn their back and I'm like, boo, and they're like, what? Though even in these lines, which by context are towards her target, she sounds to be rather friendly in nature, perhaps even a little naive. Pig Patch is a pink pig wearing brown shorts, which look a little bit like Foxy's, with rosy cheeks and with heterochromia, having a blue and a green eye. He's a banjo-playing pig who likes to recite Japanese proverbs, and yes, that's one heck of a personality description. Whether Pig Patch is trying to assert some wisdom or just rubbing it in, well, likely that option. I consider it a dignified death. Not really, it was actually quite pathetic. The nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Other than that, there's not too much more to read off this guy. Ned Bear is a brown bear with green eyes, a red and white diamond print tie, a red hat held up by a spring, and a cockeyed expression. He's much more obviously a knockoff of Freddy, and his demeanor seems to be more like a Disney's goofy type character, but without the intense dad energy or admirable quality. And that's not to say Ned Bear is a bad character, but there's nothing that great about him. A clumsy goof who seems a bit clueless, but not Glamrock Freddy. Stranger danger! Whoops, that's gonna leave a mark. Then we have Orville Elephant, an orange and yellow elephant with blue eyes, a small purple top hat, a purple flower on his front, and a little magician baton. Curiously enough, Orville is portrayed as being more valuable than the others in Pizzeria Simulator, which I will get into later. Though this could be because his gimmick and use is much more clean cut. He's a magician and seems to perform magic acts, or states he does so in his lines, what did you think of my act? I don't get out much, so you'll have to forgive my enthusiasm. Now is my time to shine. What these acts entail are an unknown, though considering his limited range of movement, I doubt it's anything too spectacular. Hopefully no pyrotechnics, these things look like they burn rather easily. 
The final and most well-known of the mediocre melodies is Mr. Hippo, and it's due to his gimmick of being long-winded. Telling lengthy, rambly stories that tend to wander all over the place and occasionally arrive at a point at the end. I said to him, Orville, uh, let me go get you some rye bread. Now, I'm unsure if elephants enjoy rye bread, but I assure you that Orville does. Now, this was on a Tuesday, which was good because rye bread was always fresh on Tuesday. They made sourdough bread on Monday and threw it out Wednesday, or rather, they sold it at a discount for people wanting to feed the ducks, and then probably at the end of the day, finally, they threw it all out. I, I don't recall. I do remember a man who would bring his son to the bakery every Wednesday and then go feed the ducks. He would buy all of the sourdough bread. Of course, you know, you're not supposed to feed the ducks sourdough bread at all. It swells up in their stomach and then they all die. It, uh, at least, at least that's what I've heard. You know, I, I never saw any ducks die myself, but I did notice a substantial decrease in the duck population over the course of a few years. That being said, Mr. Hippo comes off as a friendly grandpa-like figure who, even when hunting you, is willing to stop for a long chat. He's a purple hippo with a pink flower on his chest, a black hat, and blue eyes. A simple design for a not-so-simple character. As stated in Mr. Hippo's stories, he and Orville appear to be good friends. This might be backed up by their shared flower decals on their chests. Though considering that these are stories, stories about them going to the park, eating sandwiches, it's likely these are character-based stories and don't involve the actual animatronics. Like, the characters of Orville and Mr. Hippo are friends, but maybe not the actual animatronics themselves. I'll get into that later, but it's a little complicated. Uh, though I could be wrong, it's a possibility. Now that you're familiar with the band, let's get into the history proper. While you may remember these characters as having first appeared in Pizzeria Simulator, there are some cameos from earlier games that might have led to that inspiration that eventually formed them. That is, I don't think the mediocre melodies really technically date back to the first few games, at least not in their final forms, but I do feel like these early cameos led to their creation. So technically, the earliest cameo of the band would be in FNAF 3. During the Happiest Day minigame, a crying child ghost walks past three tables with kids at them. All of them are wearing masks. There's a pink pig mask, matching pig patch, a purple mask matching Mr. Hippo, and an orange one matching Orville down to the nose and eyes exactly. There's also a green mask that resembles a gator. Because this was a long time before the introduction of Monty Gator, Either this is a Happy Frog mask, or it is a gator mask and Happy Frog was changed into a frog by the final band. The last mask is a blue one that sort of looks like a bear. Again, I don't think the mediocre melodies were totally conceived yet, even though Orville looks to be. I think these masks were made, unique of the ones that the ghost children were wearing, and when it came time to make this band of characters, there was inspiration drawn from those with the possibility of some tweaking, with Happy Frog and Blue Bear changed to Ned Bear. The next hint was in FNAF World, sort of. One of the bosses is a patchwork pig named Pork Patch, who likely inspired the name Pig Patch later on. Now, when I was rolling into the wiki to get some pictures, I noticed that it claims that Pork Patch's patches were purposefully colored to be based off of the mediocre melodies, with Orville's colors left out because while he was a mediocre melody, he was in a higher price bracket. Uh, I'll get to that later, but now, obviously, the idea that Pork Patch was not just patchy and was purposefully designed to be made out of the patches of the mediocre melodies four games beforehand, and that Scott remembered Orville wasn't on Pork Patch and thus decided to make him more expensive, is a stretch. Remember, sometimes you can retroactively find connections that weren't on purpose. This is, in fact, a coincidence. And yes, coincidences can be just like this. Like with Golden Girls. There's a well-known episode where the Golden Girls are talking about growing old. Rose, played by Betty White, cryptically asks, What happens when there's only one of us left? She ended up outliving all of her fellow Golden Girls, and for quite a few years. There's some other eerie-seeming connections in the scene, but this is, at its root, just a coincidence. It just seems like something more. And to look no further to debunk this theory, look to Mr. Blue Bear, the pre-Ned Bear Bear. 
This would mean that Scott redesigned him between FNAF 3 and FNAF World for no particular reason and only brought him back in Pizzeria Simulator, the game about bringing stuff back. Which seems like the more likely time that a redesign would go through. Especially since a lot of characters were redesigned in Pizzeria Simulator. But now with that rant over, let's get to the Mediocre Melody's proper introduction. Pizzeria Simulator introduced plenty of animatronics to purchase for your pizzeria. The Mediocre Melodies band are the cheapest true animatronics, not counting the trash band. Save Orville Elephant, who was more expensive. Happy Frog Pig Patch and Mr. Hippo all have middle-of-the-road entertainment, but no liability. Ned Bear has higher entertainment, but he is the only one with a liability risk, though it is very low, only one point. And Orville has high entertainment and adds an atmosphere and bonus revenue point each. Other than that, though, the mediocre melodies are just decorations and not animatronics that you actually encounter. And notably, they are the only animatronics who are attached to batteries as a power source. This seems to suggest that the mediocre melodies, at least in this game, were not haunted, but actual animatronics. And that might seem like a weird thing to throw out there, but it should be noted that all of the band's personality comes from one place, Ultimate Custom Night. Let's get into that now. In Ultimate Custom Night, the Mediocre Melodies are among the many animatronics who are threats that you can face. And they're one of the few bands who has all of their members available. This is also where they get their voice lines and, as I said, where their personalities are established. But there is a catch. Happy Frog, Ned Bear, and Orville all have a single line where they come out of character and speak about keeping someone trapped with them and tormenting them, during which a child's voice can be heard speaking along. We've only just begun. I will never let you leave. I will never let you rest. This is how it feels, and you get to experience it over and over and over again, forever. I will never let you leave. He tried to release you. He tried to release us. But I'm not going to let that happen. I will hold you here. I will keep you here. No matter how many times they burn us. While it makes sense why Mr. Hippo doesn't have these lines, considering his gimmick, it's peculiar that Pig Patch doesn't either. I'm not sure if it was an oversight or if there is a story reason for this. This along with the requiring a battery thing, along with the nature of Ultimate Custom Night in general being purgatory, makes it unclear whether or not the mediocre melodies are haunted at all or just puppets for one specific soul. Were they former victims or are they mouthpieces? The only outlier being Mr. Hippo, whose stories sound like they might be a distortion of a possible backstory blended into the character he now inhabits. This is all very peculiar, but it does make sense in a way. If the mediocre melodies are supposed to be the characters from the FNAF 3 masks, those children were alive. Those characters could have been used or introduced after the surge of murders at Freddy's, so they may not be possessed. Unfortunately, there's no clear-cut answer, but it's something to think about. I should also probably explain how they work in this game. The mediocre melodies are ductwork animatronics. In fact, they are the only ones. They enter through a short section of tunnels with two entry points into the office. And you can only block one of them at a time. You can use the heater and lures to drive away or stop them, respectively. Now, I had to actually look this up, because I knew they played differently, but I didn't know how. Here is how they play differently. Orville is the fastest of the mediocre melodies. Ned Bear is the second fastest. He's fooled half of the time. Pig Patch is the next fastest down, slower than Ned Bear, but faster than Mr. Hippo. He's always fooled. Mr. Hippo is always fooled. Now the last one, Happy Frog, they didn't clarify how fast she was, but she is fooled all the time and is immune to the heater. It seems like it would be a difficult balancing act to work out, but really, I found that the ductwork animatronics were sort of easy. Having them just stuck in one area and having most of them fooled by the lure except for Pig Patch means that you can just pop in and switch vents pretty quickly, because if one is at one of the vents and you close it fast enough, you can just drive them back. 
Ultimate Custom Night is really the game where the mediocre melodies made a name for themselves, more specifically Mr. Hippo, who quickly became a fan favorite. Now, I have a whole video on this fella, so I'm not going to deconstruct his entire cryptic tale here, but instead that those tales and his peculiar shtick concreted his place as a reoccurring character in future games. Also, one last note, but Pigpatch appears as one of the bachelors in the Toy Chica's high school years cutscene. The last bachelor who Toy Chica pursues. She doesn't have a reason for pursuing him. She blatantly says that looks don't matter, which is pretty rude. He looks cute enough to me. She then lays out her plan to throw a bag over his head, knock him out with a shovel, dump him in the trunk, and then try to convince him that Balloon Boy was trying to kidnap him, evidently while stealing her car, and she saved him. As a part of him is left over in her bag at the end of all the cutscenes, it's likely she went ahead with this plan. Though what's a little odd is that Toy Chica sort of half-heartedly compliments his snout, but then steals his ear of all things. I guess she really wasn't that interested after all. But that wraps up Ultimate Custom Night. The mediocre Melody's next appearance were in Security Breach, except for Orville, who didn't reappear and hasn't reappeared yet. Happy Frog, Ned Bear, and Pig Patch all cameo on a couple of arcade machines Ned Bear the Space Soldier and Funtime Fantasy. Ever want to see a sexy frog? Well, here you go. Frog legs are on the menu tonight, folks. Meanwhile, Mr. Hippo has a significantly larger role. Firstly, in the Mr. Hippo Magnet. In the beginning of the game, Gregory gets a free prize from Glamrock Gifts. This turns out to be a Mr. Hippo Fridge Magnet, which he is less than thrilled about. Freddy, I found the free gift! Uh, it's a crappy Mr. Hippo Fridge Magnet? Lame. But Gregory is able to make use of the magnet by using it to scramble the pass machine and retrieve a daycare pass, upon which the magnet stays stuck to the machine for the rest of the game. The punchline of the joke is in the loading dock or van ending, where Gregory and Freddy are able to escape the pizzaplex and zip off into the world, after which Monty is upgraded to lead and the role of the fourth band member is given to Glamrock Mr. Hippo. Mr. Hippo's head stapled on a buff body, and his signature instrument being a triangle, of all things. The next major appearance of Mr. Hippo has not happened yet, but will happen very soon in the form of Mystic Hippo, a Mr. Hippo variant who is a fortune teller machine. And is a lady, too. Unless I'm forgetting, this is the first time in a while, or perhaps ever, that a major character got a variant that was a completely different gender. I don't count Mangle and Funtime Foxy because their deal is the whole what gender are they joke. And it's hard to count Bon Bon and Bonnet because, if you recall, Bon Bon is the first Bonnie that's a girl, and Bonnet is the first Bonnie that's a girl. Yeah, the uh, character encyclopedia was a little confusing. Time will tell what Mystic Hippo is like, but I can only assume that when she gives you your fortune, you're getting your money's worth. You're going to know what you'll be eating for breakfast for the next three weeks, sprinkled in with anecdotes about how Orvella Elefante likes her eggs, on lightly toasted sourdough bread, of course. Now, I was all set to just brush over the book section, but much to my surprise, Pig Patch does get a mention in one of the books. Just for reference, here's the Ultimate Custom Night roster, and here's how many of the animatronics actually appeared in Fazbear Frights. Yeah, Pig Patch got a lucky break. Except Pigpatch has a very small role as an animatronic who breaks down at a pizzeria and sets off the plot. This plot being Puppet Carver, the story about a man's devious plan to create his own little dolls. And then a Fazgoo monster shows up and eats him at the end. No joke, that fast. Point is, Pigpatch was shockingly in character if we're going by pizzeria simulator standards. So, that's the history of the mediocre melodies. What do I think of them? I think it's downright hilarious that a joke character of this magnitude managed to keep his whole band in the spotlight for this long, to the point where he got a Glamrock form before Foxy, even though it was a joke, and has a new variation looming on the horizon. And I do tribute this to Mr. Hippo's success as a fan-favorite character, because while the mediocre melodies are well-remembered, it was him who kept them around. But this isn't about Mr. Hippo alone. It's about this band of animatronics designed to be cheap, forgettable knockoffs who for some reason have won over more people than 
some of the major Freddy band variations. I can't say this for certain, but in some circles, the mediocre melodies seem more popular than even the Rockstar animatronics, the main Freddy band from the game, uh, not counting the scraps. And maybe that's part of it. The fact that they're these goofy underdogs, the imperfect bunch with a couple of quirks here and there, gives them a charm that some of the more clean and pristine Fast Friends do not have. As for me, I really like the mediocre melodies, uh, but I don't like them all equally. I really like Mr. Hippo and Orville, Happy Frog's cute enough, and I like taking pot shots at Ned Bear. A little good-natured jabbing, but I'd honestly say I'm maybe not feeling Pigpatch too much. Even with his unique quirk, I just don't connect with him. And I wouldn't say, like, Happy Frog's on my list of favorites and Ned Bear isn't that funny. So in a way, the mediocre melodies stand better together as a unit than singling any one of them out. Well, except for Mr. Hippo. Normally, this is where I ask if we'll see them again, but obviously this time we know we will. At least Mr. Hippo, but perhaps his bandmates will appear too since Pizzeria Simulator is on the roster. Maybe we can get a little more time with these lovable but possibly lifeless scamps. And that's the story of the Mediocre Melodies. A small band mediocre in name and by design, but memorable nonetheless. Thank you for watching.